Hey guys, Elite Clinical Research Group here. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the in-house CRA or CMA interview that I had today. Uh, particularly really good. It was an internal interview, not an external interview, so I think the, uh, the setup of it is going to be pretty different to your standard typical in-house CRA or CMA interview. Uh, for those of you that don't really know what an in-house CRA or CMA does, CMA stands for Central Monitoring Associate or Clinical Monitoring Associate, and they work on the in-house side of things, so they're going to be doing things like uh, doing a lot of TMF, trauma master file, reconciliation, making sure that's good to go. They're also going to be doing a lot of um, reaching out to sites, making sure that they have the documents, uh, reaching out to CRAs, make sure that they uh, upload the documents or send them the documents so they can upload those into the TMF. Uh, so they're also going to be doing a lot of reports, some site monitoring calls. Um, and you know, the, the new advent in clinical research with the new uh, ICH GCP guidelines, uh, there's going to be a big increase, I think, in in-house CRAs because things tend to be going in the risk-based monitoring direction, which is interesting because I've read some conflicting articles on if it cuts cost or doesn't cut cost, where the real positive thing uh, with risk-based monitoring is should be that, one, it increases patient safety, and two, that it improves the, the data. Um, so it's still up for debate if we're seeing those two things, but I think the direction is going to be going that way. Uh, but it seems like people are really interested in the risk-based monitoring because it's supposed to reduce the cost, at least on the face value. But once again, I've seen some conflicting reports there. Um, but anyway, back to the interview. So it was an internal interview uh, for CMA position, and uh, it went really well. It lasted about, lasted about an hour, um, and it was with the CTL of the department, CTL's clinical trial lead. So I think that, uh, you know, they, she didn't really ask me too many questions, uh, any specific questions really about, you know, regulatory docs or essential docs or kind of what I did in my position as a project specialist. Um, she, I guess, I guess it's because they kind of know what we do already and they've had people before from, from my department go into that area. So they kind of know what we're about and what we do. So uh, I don't know if she didn't really ask that much. Or um, it could be because I kind of knew her from before that that kind of background wasn't really as necessary this time around uh, in the interview. So uh, so it was just one interview. Um, there should be more in the process. She sent my resume on to a recruiter, to the recruiter as well as the uh, her boss, which is the director of the department. So we'll see how things go on from there. This is this is just to keep you guys updated on uh, what we're doing. Um, so this is just step one of the interview process, and I'll add more as more comes about. Um, but she said good things. She said she recommended me uh, to the correct individuals. So hopefully, you know, things continue to go in that positive direction. Uh, so we'll keep you updated. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification alert button as well. That's the bell uh, right next to the video. Take care, guys.